Hey guys, I'm Oliver with Motionary, and today you're going to learn how to color correct in Final Cut Pro and use the tools to make this a super simple process. In the fairly recent 10.4 update, Final Cut Pro dramatically enhanced its color correction and color grading features, most significantly with the addition of color wheels, color curves, and hue saturation curves, which each give you the ability to alter color in different ways. At this point, it's important to understand the difference between color correction and color grading. Color correction is about ensuring the colors and exposure within an image or clip appear as the human eye would see them, essentially making sure they appear as naturally as possible. What's awesome is that Final Cut Pro comes with various scopes and tools to help you get this right. Color grading, however, comes with more creative freedom and adds atmosphere and emotion to your clip. Consider color grading as more of a style than getting things correct. So let's get started with making adjustments to the first clip on our timeline, and then we'll be showing you how to copy effects across multiple clips. Final Cut Pro offers two easy to use tools to balance color across a single clip and match colors across multiple clips. The Balance Color tool can be found in the Color Correction and Audio Enhancement Options menu above the timeline, and you can also access it with Keyboard Shortcut Option Command B. This tool automatically balances the color of your clip, but doesn't always do a perfect job. So you can adjust it by going to the Effects Inspector and changing this effect from Automatic to White Balance. But before you make that switch, try checking and unchecking the Balance color box to see the difference. To switch to the White Balance option, click the Automatic dropdown and select White Balance. With this option, Final Cut Pro will give you an eyedropper to select a white pixel in your clip that Final Cut Pro will then use to create an auto white balance. So move your eyedropper onto a white portion of your clip and select. If, like this clip, you don't have any white in your shot, you may have to perform the color correction manually. So before we move on to how to manually color correct in Final Cut Pro, the Match Color tool can be used to, well, do exactly what it says to match the color of another clip. To add this effect, go back down to the Color Correction and Audio Enhancement Options menu and select the Match Color tool, or you can use Keyboard Shortcut Option Command M. To match another clip, skim your mouse over another clip and simply click, then select Apply Match to confirm. If you want to change the clip or frame you're matching to, go to the Match Color effect in the Effects Inspector and select Choose to reselect. This tool is a great way to get a number of clips to match before you apply a single color grade across them all. So now that you know how to match and balance color, let's get into how you can color correct your clips manually. To see what needs correcting, open up your video scopes by going to View, Show in Viewer, Video Scopes, or you can use keyboard shortcut Command 7. In here, there's a large array of tools and graphs you can use to better understand the color information in your shot. So feel free to adjust the view and change which graphs show in each area. My preference is to have a vector scope in the top left, an RGB overlay in the top right, an RGB parade across the bottom, but that's just personal preference. Now that we can see the color information in our shot, we need to adjust the temperature and tint of our shot to line up the red, green, and blue peaks in the RGB overlay. We can do this by selecting our clip and going up to the color inspector to add a color wheels to the clip then scroll down to adjust the temperature and tint where necessary. A quick tip on using the RGB overlay is to align the highest peaks, because that's where the majority of the color information in the shot lights, and check that the RGB parade colors line up. Next, we want to make sure our shadows are not below zero and that our highlights are not above 100. To do this, we'll need to adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So while you could use the same color wheels effect, we suggest using different color wheels effects for each part of your color correction or color grade. So let's add another color wheels effect. Just a quick note, because you can also adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights with a color board or color curves, feel free to choose whichever you prefer. It just so happened that my preference is color wheels. By adjusting the slider on the right side of each wheel, we can bring up or down the corresponding color area. You should be using your video scopes to ensure you're not crushing the blacks below zero or increasing the whites beyond 100. Anything below or above 
is considered to be too black or too white because it would be considered a loss of information. As we adjust the shadows, you'll notice that the blue parade has gone below zero. And while this may be an issue in some shots, you should also use your own best judgment to see how the clip looks. We suggest adjusting your shadows and highlights before adjusting your midtones so you can get a good idea of the overall exposure of your clip. And if you do want to bring up the overall exposure of your shot, try adjusting the midtones, but do be careful not to bring them up too high or down too low, else you'll introduce a faded and unprofessional look to your clip. The final step is the saturation, which is how brightly pronounced the various colors in your clip are, and can really make the difference between your clip looking amateur and professional. So again, we're going to add a new color wheels. While you can make major adjustments to your clip using the master color wheel, which impacts all ranges of color in your clip, you may want to adjust the saturation based on the color range. A vector scope, shown in the top left, is a great tool for illustrating how close the colors in any clip are to being fully saturated, depending on how close the streaks are to their corresponding color box. Notice how a dramatic increase in the overall color saturation displaces a spike in the vector scope. While it's a great tool, it doesn't always accurately represent what a good level of saturation actually looks like for your clip. So we would again advise you use your best judgment. Once you're happy with the saturation, you can consider your clip successfully color corrected. And if you have multiple clips shot in a similar setting, you may want to make use of that match color tool. You can also apply a color correction across multiple clips by selecting the clip, pressing Command C to copy it, moving to your next clip, and hitting Command Shift V to paste the attributes you want to copy over. So now that you know how to color correct inside Final Cut Pro, here are a few quick tips on shooting to reduce the color correction work you may need to do. Tip number one is to use the histogram built into your camera, if your camera has this setting of course. Ideally, you'd like an even spread of data across your image, but since that isn't always possible, try to ensure you don't have big spikes in the shadows or the highlights. Our final tip is to adjust your white balance based on the temperature of the room you're shooting in, so you're not shooting too cold or too warm. And there you have it. You've just learned how to color correct manually and use some of the built-in features inside Final Cut Pro. So guys, that's it for me. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to color correct in Final Cut Pro helpful. And if you want to make Final Cut Pro even better, over here at Motionary, we've got a whole bunch of awesome Final Cut Pro templates, transitions, effects, stock footage, and more. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.